late 19th century, as settlers pushed westward, they encountered vast prairies devoid of traditional building materials. Faced with harsh weather and limited resources, a unique solution emerged, the sod house. The sod is the, the soil containing the root mass below the grass. And so when you think about sod that's put out on someone's yard, yeah, there's a little bit of grass gr- growing, but it the, 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 they're really talking about that that layer of soil that contains the the root mass, and that's what sod is. Our journey begins with the construction process. Pioneers would cut blocks of thick prairie sod, creating walls for their homes. These earthen structures offered insulation from both scorching summers and biting winters. During the land runs, Oklahoma was covered with grass. You know, we look at Oklahoma now and we see a lot of trees. We see a lot of farm ground that's cultivated or maybe no-till growing different crops. But in the late 1800s, it would have all been grass. It would have been grazing lands or, you know, native um, grasslands that the buffalo would run back and forth across. And so they didn't really farm it. They, it was more, they harvested it. And so they, they would be out there with, with horse drawn sod plows that would, would cut to a specific depth and flip that material over. And then they would go and cut it to length and put it on a wagon and take it to their home, the homestead that they were building. Step inside these humble abodes and you'd find a simple yet resourceful way of life. The compact interiors were ingeniously organized to make the most of limited space, reflecting the practicality and resilience of those who called these dwellings home. I am Maddie Laurita Dye. And Marie Lingenfelter Hunter. But the dugouts were very important that they did them right because they could kill you. If you if it caved in on you in a rainstorm or if they it, it had to have a good runoff, it couldn't be where the water was standing and you had to be near a water source. But life in a sod house wasn't without its challenges. Persistent issues like leaks during heavy rains or constant battle against pests tested the settlers' determination. Yet, these challenges were met with innovation and a spirit of adaptation. Today, as we reflect on this unique chapter in history, efforts are made to preserve and celebrate the legacy of sod houses and dugouts. Museums and historical sites stand as testaments to the resilience and resourcefulness of those who transformed the prairie into a place they could call home. However, alkaline clay is abundant in the area. He understood the value of it, went down along the creeks and rivers collecting it, plastered the interior walls of clay that sealed them completely off, never ever allowing the interior deteriorated away. Alkaline clay is clay that has a very high pH. It has a lot of calcium and magnesium, but more importantly, sodium. And so, um, if you look at like the Great Salt Plains, that may have been where they collect that because it's a, a very, it can be very salty. And all those, like those high concentrations of that, the sodium and the salts would serve to preserve that surface and prevent um, microbial degradation of the grasses. And it would prevent a lot of uh, burrowing insects and, and other things and it would harden up a lot more than just normal clay. And so all the characteristics of alkaline clay, it, it served essentially as a preservative. Grassroots, sod houses, and dugouts takes us on a journey back in time, reminding us of the tenacity and spirit that shaped the American frontiers, allowing us to uncover the stories buried beneath the sod and exploring the enduring legacy of these remarkable structures. Mm-hmm.